All right, so we're, uh, we're going to discuss Bar Kalman. Okay. So, uh, Kalman Nebuch eats cold kugel every week. And so, um, so when I first asked, uh, 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 when I've asked Abra Moshe, so I thought when I saw the very cute flyer that it should be on Shehia Chazara and Hakmana, a warming food, on, uh, on Shabbos because that's really Kalman's problem. But then when you read the flyer, it says that it's about the laws of Bishel, which is way more encompassing. So what I'm going to try to do right now is quickly give an overview of the laws of Bishel, the Easter, the Malach on Shabbos of, I'm about to give you a definition for it in a moment, of cooking, as well as an overview of Shehia Chazara and Hatmana, which is uh, leaving food on the fire, returning food to the fire, and insulating food on Shabbos, which are all that those three things are really rabbinic prohibitions. So any malacha on Shabbos is about making a tikkun, is fixing something, making it better, and it has to be done on purpose, it has to be thought out. And uh, but bishul in particular is I wrote the definition here is causing a positive change in any in any substance, including foods, with the, with heat that sources from a fire. So it has to be from fire. For example, heat that would come from the sun would not be <coughs> prohibited from the Torah. If you would crack an egg on a car in the summertime, so that would not be uh, in Easter derisa. That wouldn't be prohibited from the Torah. However, it would be prohibited durabanan. But uh, the, the, according to the Torah law, it's got to be that it comes from the heat of a fire. And... Um, and it's any substance, so if you melt wax, anything like that, it doesn't have to be food. Anything which you, you make some kind of tikkun by uh, using the heat of a fire would be, would be cooking and be prohibited. So what does it have to get to to be considered cooked? So um, the Gemara gives it a, a shear of what's called Michael ben Drosoy. Food has to be cooked to the point and Drusoy was a, was a crook. And so he would ha often have to eat food on the run. And so, um, so uh, if, if the Gemara had there as a machlokas, whether it's a third or a half, but if it's a third or a half way cook, cooking a certain amount of food and getting it edible, like, a, what, like under pressure, that somebody could eat it, that's what constitutes uh, bishel. Uh, get, uh, getting any amount, though, there's a principle called chatzi shiur asr minatora. So even though that you did not cook enough food to to get the to earn yourself the the punishment, the onish, which the Torah says you should get for it, but any small amount is still prohibited from the Torah. So getting food either half cooked or third cooked would be that's what you have to do to constitute having cooked food. Everyone understand? I thought that we can put a cholent up right before Shabbos so that that's not cooked. You're getting ahead of the game. That's that's the shihia chazar hadmana. That's I'm talking about what you have to do right now on Shabbos. You're talking about before Shabbos. What what you'd have to do on Shabbos to be considered having cooked food. Okay. You understand what I'm saying is if you take something on Shabbos and hat and cook it the third or a half. You you cooked on Shabbos. We'll get to your point. That's a yeah, good point. That's, that's cooking on Shabbos. You just started it before Shabbos. That, that's not cooking on Shabbos. Okay. Cooking on Shabbos means you did the act on Shabbos. Anything. I, I think I don't think I'm trying to think if there's any case that's not like that. But pretty much anything that you do before Shabbos is not doing malacha on Shabbos. Right? It might be a derivative in this case. Right? If you set a lamp before Shabbos to turn on on Shabbos, you're not, you didn't, you didn't do a malach, right? So we'll discuss your case. In the case that you're talking about, really there shouldn't be any problem leaving food on before Shabbos. Raw. A anything. There shouldn't be any problem. Anything that you set to go before Shabbos shouldn't be a problem. However, we're going to see that the rabbis feared, because people really like to have good food on Shabbos, you know, a bunch of guests could show up and so they fear that you might come to do something which is us or on Shabbos if they let you leave food on. So we'll discuss that. But right now what I'm defining is, what is Bishel? So if you reheat food on Shabbos, 
and the food wasn't cooked all the way, it's cooked halfway. Is that acceptable to do it to do it that way? No, so, so that's a good question. You're getting all the good questions. So um, if the food is cooked, what's called cult sarco, it's totally cooked, then theoretically, again, from just the laws of, from, of the Torah, there would not be a problem, anything you would do at that point, because it's cooked already. Right? So once the chicken's fully cooked, so it wouldn't matter what you did now in Shabbos to put it on the fire or whatever. However, again, we're going to see that because the rabbis feared short, certain things, there's going to be some, you know, Calvin's got some issues here. But so, um, so that's a good point you're making. Once the food is called sarko, once the food is totally cooked, it really at that point, you're no longer able to, to cook it anymore. You couldn't break the Torah by cooking it more. But as we're going to see, there are, there are issues with that. It's not so simple as, as often the case. So what happens with liquids? Okay, So liquids that reach, to, in order to have cooked a liquid, you have to have it reach the level of what's called Yad Saletis boat, like that your, your hand is, your finger is cooked in the water. It hurts. And so, um, so you pull it back. It's when you pull it back. And so that's about 110 degrees. So if you heat a liquid and get it hot on Shabbos, that's considered a tikkun, a, a something that's, that's preferable. And so that's also prohibited. Um, we'll, we'll talk about later on what happens once it's a liquid that was cooked and then it cooled down. Now the next question is, is how close to the fire does it have to be? So we, we talked about it has to be, you have to cook the food to Michael Bedra Soy, a third or a half. To have, have be having considered cooked it, and then uh, once it's called sarko, it's fully cooked. So then there's no problem. By, by the way, fully cooked does not mean it's getting worse to cook it more. It just means it's completely cooked and ready to go. The fact that it could get better by like leaving it on for hours and hours, it might get more juicy or whatever. That's not a problem. It, once it's totally cooked, that's called called sarko. Um, how close to the fire is still considered a problem. Okay, so obviously the, the, a pot on the fire is the usual way to cook. Um, you can never put anything into a pot on the fire. A pot on the fire, uh, you can't, can never add anything to that. Now, eerie kli rishon, eerie means to pour. So if you pour liquid out of a kli rishon, one would be a very normal case to do that. Uh, a water urn. Exactly. Right? When you hit the when you very good. When you hit the spigot on the water urn, that's Irui Clerisha. Okay? So that is still considered very close to the fire. And it can cook Kade Klipa. It, it'll cook the edge of raw food. So even though that, that you're probably not going to cook an amount that would make you obligated to Punishment. It's not going to equal a shear, but nevertheless, it's going to cook some element of the food, and so you're not allowed to pour from a kli rishon directly onto raw food. Um, <coughs> but it cooks kade klipa, so I'll give you an example where that is very relevant. Let's say that uh, you want to make a baby bottle for an infant. So you put milk, let's say it's a raw product. Let's say what? It's raw milk. It's, the problem is milk's pasteurized now. Yeah. But let's say it's a it's some kind of water with, that has Kool-Aid. You know, it's kind of juice or something, right? That's not cooked. It's raw. So let's say you put that into that baby bottle, and you want to warm it up for the baby, so you're allowed to pour from the urn or any clearishone over the bottle because it just cooks the edge of the bottle, but the bottle can't cook. right? Or you can take that, if you want to, that bottle and, you know, and submerge it you know, you could take like a Nitilasi Nine cup and put water from the urn into that and put the, 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 uh, the bottle in there. So that's Iri Kli Rishon, pouring from her Kli Rishon. So Kli is so when... So you would be able to put hot water into formula? <clears throat> to put hot water into formula. So uh, is the formula, what is the formula? Uh, is it cooked? Is it a, you're talking about a powder? I, I forget what formula, the, the, I forget what the, the if, if it's, I mean, it, it's, if it's cooked, right, so then seemingly you could, uh, you know, you could mix. Um, it must be because you don't have to put hot water in it. You could pour it 
pour cold water in it and shake it. So it must be already cooked, or else they wouldn't get babies raw. Oh, yeah, no. so, so it's seemingly, for sure you could make it in a cliché-y like, like a cup of coffee, you know, a cliché like a cup of coffee. It could be that you could even make it like a Yuri Clearish on it if it's, if it's cooked already. So I, I think it is cooked, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that. I don't remember what the, uh, the reality of how they make I haven't, I haven't made a baby formula in a while. I forgot how they make it. But, um, but so, um, so a cliché, the rule of cliché is, is that it doesn't cook. Gemara says, cliché, in a uh, The problem with that is, is that the Gemara also says that there are certain things that are called Kali Abishal, that are easily cooked. And we don't have the expertise anymore on what that is and it isn't. So, for all intents and purposes, we're stringent with a cliché as well, not to put anything into a cliché unless we know that it's not easily cooked. And that we, we, have very, we know water is not easily cooked, there's no problem with putting uh, raw water, cold water into a cliché uh, We know that oil, olive oil, is not easily cooked. <coughs> but most everything else... Um, how about like instant coffee or instant tea? So, so that's the thing. So now instant coffee and instant tea. Raw coffee, I mean not raw coffee, raw tea is seemingly easily cooked. And uh, so there's a machlokus whether or not a cliche, a cliche either, even. So um, some people make in a cliche, according to Rav Moshe. Some people do not. They make tea scents before Shabbos and they, they don't even put raw tea. The cliche, she, so Ramosha said it doesn't cook, and the fact that you will see some color coming out of it doesn't mean it's cooked. I think it was the Chazanish that said that you see it cooks. You see that even in a cliche, she, you see the, the color in the, coming out, and that means it's cooking, so some people are, are machmir. I can tell you that um, I think most people make even instant coffee in a cliche. She. My Rebbe, Rebbe Berkowitz, he, he said you could make it in a cliche because uh, it's cooked already. But Freeze dried. Yeah, yeah. freeze dried. I don't know yeah. if that's cooked. I don't know. That's he said it was cooked. I don't know. <coughs> I think he said it was cooked. Anyway, so uh, for sure though, you can you can make it in a cliche. Then they don't cook it to make. How do they get it to into that form? Yeah, they freeze it. They freeze it to remove the. You liquid. just take raw coffee and freeze it. If that's the case, it's, so it's, you had to put a cliche. But so um. So anyway, so cliche, cliche, cliche ni. We are machmir for just about everything, not to put any raw food into a cliche. Okay, um, there's a few uh, interesting cases. So this is a very practical thing, okay? It's called a devar gush. So a devar gush is a, devar gush is something which is like a potato. You, you ever take a potato out of the cholent? So the cholent can cool down, but if you cut that potato in half, it's scalding hot. It's like a battery, it holds heat. So solid foods hold heat. So there's a question now of what do we consider? Do you consider a Dover Gush to be like a first vessel and then it can cook still? Even though it's in a plate now, you've poured it into a plate, so you think it should be a cliche, but it's still, it doesn't cool down like other things do. And so it holds in intense heat in it. So we're machmir on that, uh, and so a person should be very careful not to have raw food come in contact with a davar gush. So like, you know, you put salad on your plate and cholent, <coughs> so you, you should be careful not to let the cholent come in contact with the salad. Because the, the, uh, the, even in a kli shlishi, even a kli revi'i, you ever bitten into one of those potatoes, it can scald your mouth. It, it stays very, very hot, or, or a good chunk of meat. So uh, that's that's one case which... But the, the juice that, like, So flows, that, that cliche would that's not be okay. a problem. Right, the cholent liquid in a cliche should, seemingly shouldn't be a problem. will not cook, but, it, but a dabber gush will. A matzo ball also? Well, a matzo ball is cooked. We'll talk about it in a minute. That's so not a raw food. What? Potatoes cooked. Oh, you're saying, I didn't understand what you meant. Oh. You're saying, that, yeah, so a matzo ball could be considered, it I was thinking of the other side thing. of it, would it get cooked by, oh. right, <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, so yeah, matzo ball could be the same thing. If, could, if it holds heat inside, 
solid foods hold heat inside way past what what uh, and so uh, they they can cook still even though that they're in a, a second vessel. So um, so how about now? There's another case here of what do we consider a ladle? Right now, you, so you have a pot of soup, and you ladle soup out of it. So, um, so what do you consider that? Right? Is that a cliché already? And when you put the soup into the into the into the bowl, is that a cliché or not? So, well, can you think of any difference between a ladle and a and a, and a regular cliché? No, it depends if it's staying in the. In well, the you're, soup. okay, you, you're, but even if it's not, okay, you're going. But yeah, so you're entering it into the into the clee right. rather than pouring it into. Right. In other words, the difference between a kaf, a ladle, is that usually with a clee shiny, shiny, you you poured the food into a, a cold second vessel. That's kind of what the the point of clee shiny is: is that it's a cold. It's the walls of the clee shiny are cold, right? But here, what happens is. You're taking this cough and you're putting it into the klirisha, right? So Avram Moshe, there is a, he's making it. It's true. That's a halachic difference. Is that um, for sure? If the the ladle was left inside the klirisha, so that it's being heated by the klirisha, so then it, that has the din of a klirisha still. And when you put the soup, when you take that ladle and pour it into the into the bowl, that's still going to be a kli. Shaney, okay? I'll, we'll discuss in a second why that matters. And then uh, there's, it's not clear what happens in the case of, of, um, of um, when, when it's, it wasn't left in there, you just stuck it in there and pulled the soup out. And it wasn't sitting in there, it was, you just took the cough, a cold cough, but you're still sticking it into the clearisha and pulling soup out. So there's, there's issues like, for example, pouring onto bread. Like, like you have bread in your in your bowl, so bread is cooked. We'll discuss this this later with bread and pouring like with a soup, hot soup on it. But but so if it's if you left the the uh, if it was in there the whole time, you can't do that because bread is like easily changed. It's easily cooked. But if the if the, if the ladle was a was not in left in there, so then you could consider that. There are those who would say you could consider that to be a cle. It's very cliche now. It would fall apart and crumble into indistinguishable little What's that? Bread. bread. You, well, you put bread in your soup. I mean, people... No, would... we say yesh afia uh, <coughs> acher bishel. Right. Right. A yesh bishel acher afia. Correct. So got it backwards. Right. Right. That's what we're going to discuss. But, so that's the thing, though, is what if you can't consider it a klish lishi already? Right? So then there, there is... So what, uh -huh. that, you're right. That's what we're going to get to. Otherwise, you would say the bread's cooked. There's no problem in the first place. Right. Right? But so since the, the bread... We'll get to that in a minute... Right, but since the bread is a different, was made in a different right, like way. The soup nuts are fried. <coughs> right, are... and so that's that's already official. So the soup nuts are not a problem. They're just bad for you. But that's Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> you bake the bread in an oven. <laughs> yeah. You take it out and you put it in your soup. It's a different. We're, we're going to get to a minute. Well, I'll explain that to you in a minute. That that. Let me see how far away that is. We'll get that in a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to get to that. So it's, I hope that this will not be too confusing the way that it's hard to put it all together in a way that's not confusing at all. But so, um, so first of all, you never spoon food out of a pot on the fire. Okay? It's moving things around there can cause it to cook. You always have to take the pot off the fire if that you want to, to ladle out of it. Uh, you should not cover a pot on the fire. It can cause it to heat more. Uh, one of the things that, you know, people want to do sometimes is they see a pot on the blech there and they want to see what's in there, you know, and so they lift the pot, they take a little sniff, put the pot, so you really shouldn't do that. If you want to uncover it, whereas we're going to talk about how, but you have to take the pot off the ha-fire. Uh, there's no problem in taking a, the, the, the cover off while it's on the fire. The problem is you can't put it back on. So you have to pull it off the fire to put it back on. We'll discuss that pretty soon. Does this... Also apply. Is this the same principle? Is I seen people like uh, take take challah and they put it a towel around the whole thing. We'll get there. Okay. Is that the same principle? No. No. no that, they'll get there soon. 
And the chal is on the fa- on the floor. They're they're trying to 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 insulate. That's going to be under hatmana. They're trying to keep the the chal warm. We'll discuss. Are you just keeping it moist or warm, or trying to keep it warm? There's a difference. Once you take that pot off the fire, can you put it back on? As long as you haven't taken your hand off of it. Well, that's one of the conditions, right? We're, we're gonna we're gonna get there very very soon. That's some of Colin's issues here. You guys are you're right on the money. Trying to get there, but um, okay. The only uh, so so if you want to cover a pot, you shouldn't co- ever cover the pot on the. On, while it's still on the fire. Um, one thing that I want to tell you about making coffee or tea, yet what you have to be careful is, you have to make sure that the cup is completely dry. Okay, now here's the other thing. What happens if you drank a cup of coffee and you, um, you, want, to, uh, you want to have a second cup now? Okay, but there's invariably there's a little bit of coffee left in the mug that you finished. So if that, that the, what's left in the mug has any warmth to it, if it's above room temperature, you're allowed to just add more water and make another cup of coffee. If that, that liquid has cooled down all the way, so now you have to, um, you have to take out, uh, you have to dry the mug, or like let's say you wash the mug in water, so you have to now dry it all the way, okay? So, um, okay, so now we're getting to Kalman's issues. We're just going to start talking about reheating foods. Up till now, we've been talking about what constitutes uh, cooking, um, actually cooking on Shabbos. Now we're talking about what happens when you have cooked food that you want to reheat. Okay, and this is where Kalman's cool comes into, starts to come into play. So we have a principle that says, Ein Bishel Acher Bishel. There's no such thing. You can't cook something that's already been cooked. Right? We talked about once it's reached Yad, um, called Sarfo, where it's completely cooked, so you can't cook it anymore. It's cooked. So, um, but there is, uh, we, there's a machlokus on this, but we're machmir for the concept that if, a, if it's a different methodology of cooking it, then it is a problem. So, let's say a fia acher bishel or bishel acher a fia. If you if you baked bread and now you cook it, that creates a problem. As uh, Avraham Moshe pointed out, like let's say you have those soup nuts, so they're fried in oil. So that's bishel. The, the, let me explain the three types of cooking. There's bishel. There's also really four. There's bishel which is when you cook something in a liquid, you submerge it into a liquid. That's called bishel. <laughs> a fia is when you bake something. It's baked in an oven. It's not direct on the fire. It's the heat of the oven that bakes it. And then there's slee. Slee is roasting, when you roast something over a fire. And each one of them creates like a different kind of texture, a different tikkun in it, right? If you, um, if you take bread, which was baked, it's kind of fluffy, and then you cook it, now it's cooked, it comes out different now. And it's not the same anymore, it changes it. Right? If you take a piece of chicken that was cooked in chicken soup, and you roast that over a fire, it will change it. It will become a roasted piece of meat now. And so, that makes a new tikkun in it. And so we're stringent not to do that. Okay? Now, so you're allowed to reheat in the same way. In other words, if you, if, if something was baked, uh, let, let's let's say it's cooked right now. If something was cooked, you can recook it. Um, if something was uh, cooked in a dry way, like roasted, you can reheat it that way. So there's a difference, though, in halacha between a liquid and a solid. Because once a liquid becomes cold again, so you're not allowed to heat it up again. It, it, lost, it's, it, it lost the change, seemingly, that was in it. You can't, you can't distinguish anymore that it was one time cooked. So, uh, let's say that you make a, uh, let's say you have a chicken in a sauce, right, that you had on, on Friday night, 
and now you want to reheat that. You can't reheat the sauce. Now you can only reheat the chicken. So you'd have to, you'd have to remove the chicken from the sauce in order to reheat it. Let's say like you made chicken and there's like there's some congealed fat on it. Which you know variably when you cool when you cool up. So that if you can't, if there's a bunch of it, you can't reheat that and make it into a liquid. But if there's just some on the chicken that's gonna become melted, right? So you're you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to rewarm that. Okay? You hear? But so um so let's say like um let's say um so you can't put the bread, like Abraham Moshe was talking about, then in the soup. Because it's baked and, and putting it in a pot of soup. But well, that's not really going to cook it again. It's not hot enough to cook it. Well, that's the thing. is, So that's why I was trying to say is, let's say in a cliche lishi, you can. The thing about bread is it's considered easily cooked. It's already cooked. It's already but, baked. It's, but it's easily chained. It's not cooked. It's baked. It's baked, right. Right. And it's easily cooked. And so that's what I'm saying is you can put it into a cliche lishi. If the soup is considered a cliche lishi, you can put the bread in it. Putting soup nuts into a clichéni is fine, right? Because they're cooked. Right? They, they were cooked before. They weren't baked. Yeah. They were fried. You said. Yeah, full. They were in. They, it's again. I think it does matter if it's deep fried or not. But they were. They're, they're fried in oil, which is considered cooking. They're submerged in a liquid when they're cooked. And so. Um, um, one problem is, is that sometimes people want to warm, rewarm challah, and so um, you're allowed to rewarm, rewarm it. Um, you can't, well, as we'll see, you can't put it directly onto the blech, but you can put it on something. But you can't let it turn to toast. That's like sleet. That's like roasting it. And so you, you can't uh, put it in, in a plate. Here's another, by the way, here's another important halacha. You can't put something in a place where it will change on, on, with the idea that you'll remove it. In other words, you're not allowed to put um, something in a, in a place where it will, it will cook again in, with, the, with the idea like, I'll remove it beforehand. Okay? You're not allowed to put it there because we're afraid you'll forget it there. But so, um, so you, you shouldn't put the challah in a place, you, you're allowed to rewarm it, but we'll talk about how in a minute, but you're not allowed to let, let it turn into toast. Let's say you have drained noodles that are in the fridge. Right? You, you cooked noodles, they're drained. Cook them. No, well, not yet. <laughs> we'll, get to, we'll get to the Kegel in a minute. But you, you have drained noodles, and they're, they're even dry. Or you have matzo balls in your fridge, and you want to add them to the chicken soup. Right? So as long as you take the pot off the fire, they're already totally cooked. Right? This, the noodles were cooked, and the, uh, the matzo balls are cooked. Now once you do that, if you do add noodles or matzo balls from the fridge into the soup, you can never return that to the fire again. You can take the soup and add it to the noodles. You can do that too. That way. Yeah, you can do that too because they're both cooked. There's no problem with that. No problem putting the soup that back on the Not at all. Right. Not at all. Um, but my point is, if you added the noodles, once you, whenever you add something that came from the fridge or off the fire into a pot, you can't now put that pot back. Even though that pot could be returned, as you asked a minute ago, we'll talk about it in a minute. But So you take the pot off, you're holding it, we'll talk about the other condition. You're holding it. If you take something that was not on the fire and put into that pot, you can't return that pot now to the fire. Um, can you put, um, could you put roasted chicken into the, into the chicken soup off the fire? Different method of cooking. Right, you can't do that. It's roasted. You're cooking it. How is that different than the bread that's baked? Okay, so so that's that's true, but you're not you're not putting the bread into a, a klirisha, a first vessel. You're right. If you had the soup as a klishlishi, a third vessel, you could put roasted chicken in there. But what I said is like this: if you would take the pot off the fire, I can put matzo balls and I can put uh, luchin, I can put uh, mm -hmm. noodles, cooked noodles, into the pot. I can't do that with roasted chicken or bread. 
Right. You understand? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, but I could put um, noodles which are cooked or, ma or matzo balls which were cooked. Okay, but you could take it off the stove and have the roasted chicken in a bowl and then... Oh, uh, you, you have to have a cle make sure it's a cle shlishi. Right. Right. Okay. So, okay. Would, did we say that the label is considered... So, if shape? it's not, if it wasn't being kept in the pot, yeah. you can rely on that. Right. Especially because it's already cooked. Yep. Since, since you're dealing, you couldn't do that with something raw, but with something cooked, you can rely on the fact that, that even if it's a different method of cooking, that um, the ladle, there's a, there's a mach locus by the ladle where the ladle is considered, when if it wasn't in the pot, is it considered to be a clean shame or not? There's also a mach locus with aim bishel or bishel. So if you have both of them, you're allowed to be lenient. So you can take with the ladle that wasn't in the pot, and, and uh, put it into a bowl, and then that bowl is good enough to put the roasted chicken to. But you can't take the first pot and put roasted chicken into that. That's a different method of heating. Okay? So now we're going to get to Shehiya, Chazar, and Atmana. And this is really where we get to Kalman's issue. Okay? So, um, so these... So what is Shehiya, Chazar, and Atmana? So Shehiya is leaving food on the fire. Okay. In the days of uh, the Flintstones, right, you had, a, they had ovens and they would leave coals, hot coals in the oven. And they'd leave food there, right, to try to keep it warm coming into Shabbos, cooking it and coming into Shabbos. That's called Shehia. Then Chazara, it, now what, the problem by Shehia, by the way, what were they frightened about by Shehia? They were afraid that if you leave food cooking coming into Shabbos, that you're going to be afraid, maybe you have guests coming, you know, whatever it might be, and you'll stoke the coals. Right? You'll, you'll, because you're afraid to turn the heat up. Right? Oh no, it's not getting cooked in time. Turn the heat up. So that's Shehiya. Chazara is taking food either off the fire and putting it back on the fire, or else taking food that wasn't ever on the fire coming to Shabbos and putting it on the fire, even if it's totally cooked. So they were afraid there that that looked like cooking. And so you're not allowed to do Chazara unless there are certain things that are met. And then there's another thing called Hatmana. Hatmana was um, insulating. Right? They would insulate foods in order to keep them warm. And again, the rabbis were afraid that if you did hot mana, you might stoke the coals. You might try to, you know, get nervous and, and try to uh, stoke the coals again, which is prohibited on Shabbos, and to and break Shabbos, and so that's another isser. So let's just discuss these three things as they relate to, uh, and, and these are very practical, some of these things. So. Leaving food on the fire going into Shabbos. Now, as we said, all these three things should not be a problem, but there are rabbinic prohibitions here. The best way to do it, if you can do it, is just have the food fully cooked and on a blech coming into Shabbos. What does the blech do? Right. So the point of the blech, blech I think means tin. And it's, it's just a, you can use anything. Anything which covers the fire works. Uh, I mean, don't use something that will burn, like, like aluminum foil or something like that, but any, anything that will, is strong enough to, to... So, what the blech does is that it, it covers the fire, it reminds you of the fire, that, that, that you shouldn't do anything, and it, it should preferably cover the knobs too, so that you can't turn it up. It's a discussion as to the purpose of the blech. Is it just a hecker? Is it to remind you that this is Shabbos and you shouldn't do anything? Or should it actually cover the makom hitui, the place that you would turn things up? The best, you have to cover the fire. The best thing is it all, if it also covers the knobs. Another thing you can do is to remove the knobs. Okay. So, um, so the best thing to do is to leave the food on the fire going into, Sh into Shabbos. It's best if it's just fully cooked and on the blech. You can leave totally raw food coming into Shabbos because once it was raw, they weren't afraid that you were going to try to make it ready Friday night. Right, let's say you want to make your cholent. So right before Shabbos, you can just throw all the raw food in there and turn it on. 
Um, so the thing about that is, is that you just can't touch it now, right? You can't. You have to make sure not. To, it's not. It's good if you were to just stir it or anything like that. You'll be cooking it. So it doesn't right? have to be third away cooked before child starts. It it doesn't have to be. Right? It's it, like I said. It's best to have it really totally cooked. If it's totally raw, it's fine. Totally raw. It shouldn't be that it's in the middle. It should be totally raw. And because then they're not afraid that, that, uh, that they'll try to heat it up, they turn it up. The best thing, like I said, is to have it totally cooked. <coughs> and, um, and, um, <coughs> same thing with, um, with uh, the urn. The urn really should be hot. The water in the urn should be hot before Shabbos. I put it on beforehand enough time that the water will be hot. question about the blood. Yeah. So what then is the purpose of the water blood? I thought it was to distribute the heat evenly, but I was told that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it was to give it more. Right. So we didn't get there yet, but okay. <laughs> what that that might be. See, here's the thing: is some people are mocked here the water block, the use of it for for. If the water block does what it should do, Kalman can take his his kogel right out of the out of the refrigerator and put it on the block. Okay, but there's a mock locus about that. Okay, there's, they disagree. Here's why. Okay, I didn't get to this yet, but one of the things that you can, you can do is if you have a hot pot on the fire, or if you have a burn, or if you have a crock pot going, you can take the kogel out and put it on top of the pot, or on top of the crock pot, or the urn. Why is that not a problem? Because the prohibition of Chazara is, is that it looks like you're cooking. Does anybody cook by putting a piece of kogel on top of a crock pot? <laughs> is that a way to cook kogel? So it, it's not a problem, right? Now what they did with the water blech is, the idea was they made like a very thin vessel. It's like you could call the bottom of the water pot a, a thin pot, right? It's a thin pot with water. And so now you have a cover on that pot. And so now whatever you put on the pot, you're really putting on top of, a, of another pot. But it still appears. That's the problem. So some people say that, that sounds very nice, and, and maybe it, it, but the reality of it is, is that nobody can tell that. And other people say, who, who, when did the Chazal tell us what size the pot has to be? So... There's a discussion about this, and, and so you have to ask your rabbi. Now, what some people might say is, even if you're not going to use that blech for its intended halachic pre you know, uh, preference, whatever it was created for, it, the reality is it distributes heat well. So people might use it for that reason, and you can certainly use it as long as you don't take food directly. It, it was, according to that stringent, it's not worse than a blech. Right? It's just, it's just a blech according to them. Right? So if it, it's a nice blech that distributes the heat well, very nice. Go ahead and use it. It's just don't take food out of the refrigerator and put it directly on that. Right? So you have to ask a posake, your posake, as to whether or not that they would allow you to use that blech as, as if it's, a, it's on top of it. Well, you can use it as like you would a blech. Well, for sure that's right. true. Oh. It's no worse than a blech. That's for sure true. Right? It's no worse. So, um, but so Shahia is leaving the food on the fire. Um, you need a blech, right? And um, the truth is that you can leave food directly on the fire um, if it's what's called mitzamek aralo, if, it, if it's getting worse by staying on the fire. But I don't think that's a very practical thing in general. The best thing to do is leave the food on the fire, on the blech, mm. coming it fully cooked, coming into Shabbos. You don't make toast, you do. <laughs> well, it depends on what the, what it is, right? Um, now, what about wanting to leave food in an oven? That's a problem. Okay, um, leaving food cooking into Shabbos, uh, if it's cooking in an oven, <coughs> is a problem. And so, uh, how about food that's not cooked? And so you, you have to ask a, uh, you have to ask for a rabbi, you need like a, an insert, and that's, um, okay. Um, if that you have a, a pot, like a crock pot, or a hot plate, that's single setting, 
In other words, it, it doesn't, there's no way to adjust the heat. So you're allowed to leave food on the, on the hot plate or in such a crock pot coming to the shops. It's not, it's not used for cooking, it can't cook. Right? It's not, it's not, it can't be adjusted. So, um, okay. You could cook with a crock pot on one setting. Right, that's true. But I'm saying, I didn't say it right. It, it can't, you, there's no way to, to change it. The whole fear is that you'll, right, so the one setting, if there's no settings on it, it it's not a problem. Why, I mean, I understand why you can't go up in heat, you know, for like a, a block or a crock pot, because you're increasing the, the flame or you're doing something, but why can't you turn it down? Turn what down? Turn the, the temperature of the crock pot, go from like medium to low, or, you know, could you not? Um, it really depends on the technology, and I think it's always a problem, because the problem isn't cooking, it's, it's that, first of all, you're not allowed to, ex in, the, in, in the old days, you couldn't extinguish, you're not allowed to extinguish anything. In, the, in this case, though, I don't know what would happen if, you, if it was like something that was co uh, continuous, but the way that it works is you're turning it off and on, I believe. See what I'm saying is? I believe when you switch to lower, it's going off and then on. So it's not a continuum. Flame. You want a gas flame. So it's, con it's considered to be putting out, to, 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 to be extinguishing on some level, some of the... And I don't think it's so simple, that whole question, but the, the, the post can say you're not allowed to lower a flame on Shabbos. It's a good question. It's, Extinguishing on some level, yeah. But you kind of went really quick over this oven business. We have a, a practical question about the oven. I was afraid of that. Yeah. What? Go ahead. If the oven. I don't know. Yeah, are you, is it a Shabbos oven question? What? Is it a Shabbos oven question? Yes. It's okay. A Shabbos oven. Go ahead. I don't know if I can answer it or not. Oh, okay. So if the food is cooked, and you know it's just being warmed up. <coughs> and say, like, I forgot to, to put it on the Shabbos mode, or I forgot to put it on the timer, I mean, so that it would automatically go off. So the food is in there, food is cooked, but the oven is on. So can I open the door and take it out? I believe not. Okay. If the, you see the flame, and so you know it's on, as opposed to opening the door and then causing the it's a cycle on. I think, isn't there a difference there? If it's already on... I believe if it's on, if you know it's on, I believe you're right. You could open it, then you couldn't close it, I think. That wouldn't turn yeah. it... That wouldn't make it go on. I'm not sure. Okay. If you know the oven's on, so opening the door is not going to put make it come on, it seems to me that you could open the oven door. But then I, I think that... I think you might have a problem now. Uh, shutting it, unless maybe you know it goes off. Right, you have to wait. But it's it's. But it might. Not is it going to go off yeah. mm -hmm. with the door open? No, because it would actually cool it down, so it would want to get up right. to that temperature. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. right. someone said, "Oh, well, one time, one time you can open and close it." But I don't think so. Neither. Um, yeah, I, I don't have to say that. I mean, I, I would. I have to say what I've asked. Well, maybe you I, would have to take all the food out at one time. Right. Maybe that's what it means. Right. Right. Yeah. In other words, right. take it all out, right? Okay. Or if you see that flame on, you know, wait till it till it turns on, until it cycles on again. What, what I've done in the, with that situation, I've had it happen once or twice, is I've asked somebody not Jewish to shut the oven off. So the way it'd be better, you know. Oh. Can I ask them to do that? We well, didn't come to that class. Did you? you had to come to last class. Right? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's to, a complicated. To shut it off, to have it, to hint, to have them put it off is, is permissible. So your points. So if the oven's on, you don't know if you see the flame. Yeah, but I think you couldn't close it. You could see. I think you could open it if the flame is on. If the oven's on, but now you're preparing a meal. Your oven's on. I once hear you could close it like with a sheet or something. Maybe would that make sense? Why should you have to do it? Are the oven's on? You're not causing anything to happen when you. I know, but now can you can you close it? See, I don't think you can close it. Well, why? Well, you're not changing anything when you close it. You're not causing it. You're it's gonna, already reheating. Right, it's going to go off. It's, it's not going to go off. It's going to go off sooner. Right. The it's oven will sooner. go off sooner because it's going on, and by closing it, you're going to cause the oven to shut off sooner. sooner. Yeah. So again, Pass that. The you can't put your food into the oven. I, I don't know the situation with these Shabbos. That's what I don't know so much. 
I, I really, this is what we use. Nothing to do with Shabbos mode. Well, on Yantif, people leave their oven on, right? And then yeah. your second day of Yantif is Shabbos. So Friday night, you want to have your food warm. I'm not sure about that. What do you guys do? Whatever my wife does. I mean, <laughs> you have it on a timer. So it automatically shuts Yeah, but she's saying Shabbos goes in. That's good. But what happens when Shabbos goes into Yantif? Right. So you want to put now food into your oven on Yantif. You mean Yantif goes right. into Shabbos? Right. Now there's no well, cooking. Way, there's no problem of cooking on Yantif. The problem is, 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 is are you turning the... the uh, right. 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 Right, because if, if the oven is not on and you open the door, it's going to cause it to turn yeah, on. Yeah, I don't know how that... that Wait, and based on what you're saying, what difference does it make if you have a blech in your oven? You'd have to have a four-sided... Because you're still causing right. the... Right, I don't know. See, I don't know. How, I'm, that's, I'm, I have to say I'm in ignorance with that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that works to be um, Okay. So, Chazara. So, returning. So, if you want to return a pot to the fire... As you said, Todd, you have to. There's two things you have to have. Is you, if you take the pot off, you have to have the intention at the time that you took it off that you're going to return it, and you have to keep your hand on the pot the whole time. Now, if you forgot one of the two of those after the fact, you blew it. You forgot one of the two. You can still return it. Okay. Um, like I said, is put the put the pot put the. Uh, you know, on the, uh, put the lid on and then put it back, right? Yeah. But like on a Saturday morning, I have my bluff and then I have another pot, another foil pan or something inverted to put that on. So if I yeah. forgot on a Friday night even and, and forgot and I want to put it back on, then I can't, don't I have to then have that other layer? What, what, do, you, you, what do you want to do? I'm talking about when the pot is on the fire, so hot. You're okay. removing a hot pot that was on the fire and now you want to put it back. If, it, if that got below Yad Seletis Bo, if that pot got below, you can't put it back on. Okay. I'm talking about, you're talking about a hot pot, and you take it, slide it off. Now what you can do is you can just slide it off the hot part of the, of the black. You can, where it's not, not on the fire anymore, right? Then you can take food out of it and then slide it back. Did you say though you can't take the top off and then put it back on, and then put it back on the fire, on the flame? Or on the you can, part of the you, you can put you can put it back on if you put the lid on before you slide it back onto the fire. Okay. Unless right. it's a water block where it's all evenly distributed hot. There's no well, okay, place. Well, so then, then if there's no place that's not hot, so you have to take it off. Take the, it off. Yeah. So um, so then um, okay, so that's um, that's the basics of chazara. You can never just take cold food out of the fridge and put it directly onto the blech. There's actually some opinions that if it's something that would never be cooked like that, you can't like to take kogel and put it on, on the blech. But machmir not to do that. So the case that you said is, if, if Kalman wants to have his kogel hot on Shabbos, what he needs to do is to put it, take the kogel out of the fridge and then put it on top of either a pot, a uh, uh, you know, a uh, crock pot, uh, the uh, inverted pan. You could put it also the... next to the blech, <clears throat> next to the fire, right off. You know, where it's it's next to it, and we'll warm it up, but it's not on the blech. So, uh, so that's the way that Kalman should do. So he doesn't have to be poor Kalman and eat cold kogel every shabbos. Oh, or an inverted pan or something. I like said that. you can put on. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's because that's really a pot on the fire, right? There's some say that that's that's fine if it's empty. So you if the pot on the fire, or if you have a, an, a, an empty pot, an empty vessel, that's also okay. Because the idea behind that is it makes it clear it doesn't look like cooking. Nobody cooks like that. So if you have a food that's in a, in a foil wrap that you put on that inverted pan, do you have to open the foil somewhere? So we'll discuss that in a moment. <clears throat> so you guys know too much. I'm, I'm trying to lead you <laughs> into your next... That's all right. You're doing a good job. So, um, okay, so now you, what you're discussing is hot money. <clears throat> Insulin. Right. Okay. Now again, also you can take cold chicken out of the fridge also on on, on Shabbos. Right. Just make sure that it doesn't have liquid. As we said before. Um, now hatmana is insulating, and that's again there's a fear that you might stoke the coals. Right. 
So, um, so what they used to do was they would put stuff, they would put something on like um, uh, on coals, and then either have coals all around it, or else have something else wrapped around it with coals that would keep it would would uh, keep it warm. So there's several conditions of hot mana to be considered a problem of hot mana. So, and and most of the point of these of these things is that. If, they, if, the, if the rabbis see that you're not overly concerned with the heat, so then they weren't so worried about, um, about your, your wrapping it. So if, the, if it's not totally wrapped, that's what you're referring to, so you leave part of it unwrapped, so you show that you're not you know, totally concerned with keeping it warm, then there's no problem of hot mana. The only problem with Hatmana is a Kli Rishon. Okay? Again, it's because if somebody's really so concerned about heat, they're not going to have a Kli Shani. So if you took food off the fire and put it into a second vessel, then there's no problem with wrapping it. Um, it must be for the purpose of, of insulating. So let's say that uh, you put foil over your, your, uh, your challah or chicken, whatever it might be, wrap it in foil. So if you're doing that to hold the heat in, so that's an issue. If you're just doing it so it doesn't get dried out, you're not concerned with, with the heating of it. You just, you don't want to get dried out, so then that wouldn't be a problem. And all this you're talking about is on shabbos, right? So we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, wait, I'm not hearing the wood or the wouldn't. There's, let's say that, that, that the, you're wrapping the, the challah with foil to make it get hotter. Uh, you know that if you cover it completely in foil and, and, and you put it on top of a vessel or something like that, that it will make it hotter. So you're, you're not, that, then that's a problem. But if you're, then you have to at least open part of it, make it not totally covered. Let's say that you're doing it just because you want to hold the liquid in. You just don't want like your hot to dried out. Right? So you're not doing it to make it hotter. You just, if you put it on the thing there, you're afraid it's going to end up all dry. So that's not a problem. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Now the wrapping must be directly on it. If the wrapping's open at all, like there's space between the wrapping and the and the food, that's not a problem. Now, the rabbis made a distinction here. There's something called a Devershim Mosif Hevel, something which adds heat, makes it hotter, and there's something that just holds heat. So something which adds heat is prohibited to do even before Shabbos. So uh, some people like put like let's say food on the blech over a fire and they wrap a towel, right? So if it's totally covering it all around, that's a problem. It's most of hevel. It adds heat. So you have to leave some of it un. un, un, un uh, if you got so involved in it, they were afraid you might, you know, turn the flame up. So you have to leave some of it un uncovered, etc. If it's if it's if it's um, something which is not most of hevel, it just holds the heat in. Let's say that. Let's say you want to take um, you want to take a, 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 a totally cover a thermos, right? There's hot water thermos. And you want to put a blanket all around it to keep that warm. Is that a problem? Not most of hevel. But you want to do it on Shabbos? You want to do it on Shabbos. It's cliche. Huh. That's not a problem. But let's say that, like, to that to, to to do to put something, um, to to let's say you take a pot off the fire, a kli rishon, right? And you want to keep it warm. Uh, you want to wrap it totally on a, on on, on um, Shabbos. No. So you're not allowed to do that. You could do that before Shabbos. Right? If you have you a pot. could partially do it? Like you could throw a towel over it? It doesn't cover it totally. I'll tell you where there's an interesting question is, is, um, is, um, crock pots. So what's the status of a crock pot? Okay. So, first of all, if you ever want to return the, cro the, the, the crock pot to, what do you call the thing you put in? Is that the crock? The base. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so, uh, so, if you want to put the crock pot back in the base, so, um, so you, uh, so you have to for sure take foil and put it 
over the top where it's visible, where it comes out visibly. You have to put a blech on the crock pot, otherwise you can't return the crock pot back to its, uh, its base. Um, there are some post him that also want to say any way you need to do that because that the crock pot is considered atmana since that thing engulfs it perfectly. I remember hearing um, when I was in Eretz Yisrael, I think it was Rav Eliyashev, I think Heller, I think it was Eliyashev, that it's, you have to lift it up a little bit so it's not completely covered. And so you needed to take like some tinfoil balls, some tin foil balls put it in the bottom there. It's a slightly elevated off the bottom, <coughs> right? So that it's not hot mana. It's because it would be a hot mana that's most of hell that adds heat, which would be us to do even before Shabbos. And so, um, but for sure you have to have a foil um, that, uh, according to these posts, I'm sure you should have foil that, that goes, you know, and it's visible on the outside to take away um, hot mana. And for those that would be makel with that, leaning with that, if you took the crock pot out, you'd have to put foil in to, uh, in order to, to return the crock pot. More foil? No, no, you just, you would have, let's say like the, those that are lenient that say it's not a problem with hot mana, so you don't generally need to have foil there, but I'm saying if, oh. according to them, if you take the pot out and you want to return it now, you can't do chazaro without having a black. So Once know, again, so. you can't put that crock pot back in the base unless you've had you know, your idea that you're going to return it and you got a hand on it? Correct. It, you should have intent. And like I said, if you were lacking one of the two, you shouldn't do that, but if you were, if you either forgot, you weren't thinking, or you accidentally took your hand off it, but you did have intent to put it back, you're still allowed to put it back after the fact. But l'chachila, to begin with, you should have both. So um, so the answer is for Kalman, Sof Devar, you should have hot kogel because it's Onik Shabbos, it's not right for him to be eating cold kogel and have that terribly depressed face that he has. If you saw it, but he looks utterly depressed. He's got a huge nose too, but that's what he has. But, um, and, um, and so, uh, so if you're going to do that, so then you have to, uh, you can put it on top of a pot, you can put it on top of a, uh, the urn, right, you can put it on top of the, of the crock pot, but you should have... You can wrap it in foil completely. You can wrap it in foil completely. And then put it on top If that... Because foil... Was that a, That's a most of pebble, yeah. If you're gonna, you shouldn't do that. It shouldn't, I, I think if, if your intent is to make it hot, you shouldn't have it completely wrapped. If that's your intent, because then that, that's hot money. So you should at least leave. Again, if you're only trying to keep the moisture in so you don't end up, because common also doesn't like dry kogel, dried out kogel. So you don't want him to have hot, dried out. So if the intent of it is just to keep the moisture in, not to get it hotter, that would be okay. If the intent is is to get the kogel hotter, so I think you'd have to leave part it partially uncovered. Yeah? So going back to that hollow where people wrap it in a towel, that's generally to keep the heat in. If that's the case, it seems to me that you should, and they're putting it on, on a heat source, then that should be at least somewhat unwrapped. Yeah. That's what it seems to me. But if you wrap the towel before child, it's not an issue? I think it is an issue. No, well, that, there's a difference if it's still on the heat source or it's not on the heat source. You're talking about when it's not on the heat source, right? No, if you wrap your towel before child, you put it on your block. I think it's really slightly somewhat. If you're doing that to get it warm, not just to keep it from getting. If the point of the foil is to get it warmer, then I think you have to leave part of it uncovered. That's a most of hell. That adds heat. So if you're just doing it so that the challah doesn't dry out, so I think you could totally cover it. Before shut, before you light, you're, say, then you can just wrap it all the way. No, it's not an issue. It's, it is an it's issue. It's still an issue. Right? Yes, because. It's a Mosef Hevel. It add, we said a Mosef... Wrap it all the way and we not put it back on the fire. <laughs> That's for sure. If you want to take it off like the fire and it's hot and wrap it in foil to keep it warm, that's not a problem. Yeah. That doesn't add much heat and it's before shots. But if you want it, like we said before, something which adds heat, what's called a Mosef Hevel, you're not allowed to do even before shots. Right? If it doesn't add heat, the only problem is on shots. But if it... If it 
it, it, so you can do something which doesn't add heat before shava. So you want to take the hot challah out, cover it in foil, so it'll stay warm for the meal, not a problem. But if you're going to put on the blech, so now that's a most of, if it's totally covered and your intent is that that foil should get it hotter by holding the heat in, that's a problem even before Shabbos. Mm. And so you need to uncover part of it. How much of it? I, I, it doesn't give it an amount. It's, once, once that part of it is, uh, is uncovered, it shows that you're not mashuga about it getting hot. Right? If a person who really wants to get it hot completely covers it. Once that you've uncovered a piece of it, it shows. It, it, it shows some of the heat gets out now. Once you uncover any part of it, you know, it, it lets heat out. It releases heat. And so you're showing that you're not overly concerned that you're allowed to do that. What if I just want to wrap the whole thing, put it on there, because I don't want it to get, I want it to stay moist, and it just gets hot along with the Okay, but it's not your intent. The, the intent is what, you know, you can't, look, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to do something that's not real, you know, that's, uh, you know, where you're playing a game. You know, you have to know what you're really doing. You know, I can tell by the Olympus look in your face, which yeah, you were doing. <laughs> but, yeah, doesn't but, everybody like hot challah and now we can't have hot challah? No, I don't, I don't think that's true. My, my <laughs> wife always leaves it, my wife always leaves it um, open and, and it still gets... If you put it on the first place warm and then you have it, you know, mostly covered, it stays warm. Trust me. <laughs> okay. So she puts the challah on the block and it's just parsley and covered. Yeah. Uh, on, a, on, a, some, on a pot, a pot. not directly on the yeah. pot. Yeah, and like I said, be careful to make sure that it doesn't doesn't come toast or the bottom or something, because then it's it's really a problem of uh, uh, slea. It's slea Slea Okay. Okay. Very good. Shabbat.